Hello, this is going to be a fun little mini, mini series on probability measure. And we're going to cover topics like set theory, fields, sigma fields, uh, Borel sigma fields, probability measures, conditional probability, random variables, all from a uh, probability measure or you know a measure theoretic standpoint. Um, this is supposed to be at a medium to maybe a little more than medium level and, and we'll just jump right in. So the first one, oh and since probably measures are heavy into set theory or set theoretic uh, results, first talk is on set theory and a lot of this you will you go well this is I already knew this and, and that is true but we will take it to a new level so you, we, we start out slow and then we go up okay um, so A is a set or let me rephrase that a set S has elements little s okay and then we notation wise we say little s is an element of s so it means s is in s so that notation this it, this notation means that little s is not in s um, now this is a you know since s is a set we can take you know potentially smaller number of those and call it s prime and so s prime is a subset of s they could equal that's what this little bar means so this means if there's an element in s prime that implies that that element is also an s that's this notation here um, so this notation here it means it's a proper subset okay so um, you know if if there's an element in s prime it's also an element in s and there exists say in, in the s little s2 there's an element in s that's not in s prime so it's a proper subset and so maybe a picture of that is this is s this is s prime so this is a proper subset because there's some elements in s that are not in s prime okay um now, throughout these, this little mini-series, the script S is going to be our universal set, or space. We'll call it a space. So, um, like our sample space. Now, the set operations, um, complement just means everything that's not in A. So, if we have A complement, that's all the elements of our sample space, or universal space, such that it's not in A. So if, with a Venn diagram, it's everything but A. There's our region. Um, the union of sets, um, now this is a countable union, means, um, you know, and we write it like this, or we could do it in this notation from 1 to n, take the union of aij. That means um, that if we want all the elements of S, you know, the sample space, such that S is in at least one of those aij's, that's what this union means. It doesn't have to be in every one of them because it just needs to be in one of them to be in this set okay um, now if it if it's a uncount you know a you know infinitely countable set s is in this set if it and it just has to be in one of those aijs the intersection of aij is written with this upside down u and notationally it's this and then from set theory it says that if s is an element of of our we want all the s's in our sample space such that s is in every one of these aj's it has to be in all of them to be in this set okay so and if it's a infinite countably infinite then to 
we want all the S's in our sample space such that S is in every one of these. It has to be in every, since it's the intersection, it has to be in every one of those. You know, Venn diagram is that little section there. Now the difference is uh, um, a A1 minus A2. That means we want all everything in A1 that, but not in A2. So the Venn diagram is this. And notationally means we want all the elements in our sample space such that it's that the, that element is in A1 and not in A2. Okay, that's this. Okay, and then one note is A1 minus A2. You can actually do it with the um, intersection form. So A1 intersect A2 complement. So A1 is here and A2 complement is everything. So the intersection is this little piece here. Okay. We also have what's called a symmetric difference. So that means that, that it's in A1 and not A2 or it's in A2 and not A1. Which is this. But not both. That's what the symmetric difference. Okay, and you can think of it as the A1 union A2 and then subtract out this intersection so you can write it like that. So you um, we're going to do some definitions here. This is called the empty set, it means there's no elements. Um, so and then if, if uh, there's nothing in common, we call them disjoint. And um, pairwise or mutually disjoint is if we have some A, J's, one to infinity. If pairwise they're disjoint, it's called pairwise disjoint. Um, we will interchange these notations. So the plus um, so if we have sets you know one to infinity which is this and we're adding them that's the same as taking the union of them okay and this is also for finite in too if we're going to add up these sets you know put I mean add them up put them all together means take the union so these notations will be interchanged uh, Complement the complement of our sample space or universal space is the empty set or the null set. Complement of the null set is our uh, sample space. Complement of the complement is you get A again. Um, sample space union uh, any set in S is you still get the sample space back. The union with the null or the empty set is you get A back, A union A complement is the, is the sample space, A union A is A. See, some of this is pretty, you know, you'll go, oh yeah, well, yeah why are you covering that? Well, we're going to touch upon every one of these at one point, and I want to be able to refer back to this talk. The intersection of the sample space and the set is the set. Uh, whenever you intersect with the empty set, you get the empty set. Um, a and A complement are disjoint, or pairwise disjoint, so you get the empty set. A intersect A is A. Um, they, you know, the, in the union and intersection are associative, so it doesn't matter which, you could take the union of this and then that result union with A, or you could take the union here and then union it with that. And the same way with uh, intersection, it's associative. It doesn't matter which way you take the intersection. So, and they're commutative, which means A union, A1 union A2 is equal to A2 union A1. It, you know, the doesn't matter which way you put first. Intersection is also commutative. Um, distributive property, um, and I think in, when we're talking about sigma fields, I use this. Um, it's distributive. So if you have a bunch of unions, and that's intersected with a set A, that's going to be the same as if you intersect A with, with all the AJs and then take the union. 
so so intersection is distributive over union and here union is distributive over intersection okay um, now here we're actually on the next page we'll use this result to do a little proof because that's kind of where we're going into we're going to do this gradually um, if two sets equal that means that that A1 is a subset of 2 and A2 is a subset of A1. So it's pretty common in mathematics to, you know, if you want to like show that two things are equal, you might say, you know, X is less than or equal to Y and Y is less than or equal to X. So if, if that's the case, then they have to be equal. So that's the same way here. If they're subsets of each other, well, that only possible is that they're equal. Um, the uh, union of sets as a sum of disjoint sets okay we'll make use of this so if we're going to take the union of of any sets from one to infinity we can create these little disjoint sets so if we take a1 and then we take a2 intersect with a complement so this is like um you know only the pieces of a2 that aren't in a1 and then we add them together which means take the union and then for A3, we take it and, and union it, but we only want the elements in A3 that aren't in A1 or 2. And you keep doing this, so it creates little disjoint sets that when you union them, and when we're calculating probability of each of those, it has some nice properties. So De Morgan's uh, law, and this is one of this is what we're going to prove, just to kind of get in that mindset of proving things. The the complement of union. Now this can be finite or infinite. Is the intersection of A I J complement? Okay, and this goes the other way. The inter the intersection of sets, you know, or the complement of intersection sets is the same as the union of the complements. Okay. So instantly, how when when you start thinking of stuff like this to prove, you have to show that if there is if we assume there's an element in this right here, then we show that it has to be an element of this, and then we go the other way. So we assume there's an element of this, and then show that it also has to be an element in this. So that means they're subsets of each other, which means they're equal. Okay. So to prove number one, we want to show that this is a subset of this, you know, and then the other way, that, that um, this one is a subset of that, okay? And the way you do that is, let's let S be an element of this union, or the complement of the unions, okay? So that means, okay, so if we take all these unions and then take the complement, that means S is not in this piece here. And that's what this says. Can't be, right? Because we took the complement in the complement of this. Thus, S is not in any AJs. It can't be. If it's in any one of those, well, then it's in the union. So it can't be. So that means that if it's not in, in any AJ, it's in it's it has to be in the complement of aj for all of them okay well if s is in the complement of each one of these aj's that means it's in the intersection of if you take the intersection of all these aj's then it's in it okay so we just showed that if we take an element in here it has to be in there now we go the other way we assume there's an element in this one so we let S be an element of this intersection, okay? So that means that S has to be an, an, an element of every single one of these AJ complements, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't be in the intersection. It has to be in every, every, for every J. Hence, if it's in AJ complement, it can't be in AJ because it's in the complement for all J. Well, if it's not in any AJ, well then it's not in any union, right? Because it's not in any of these, so if we union them, it's still not in it. So therefore, 
it has to be in this complement. Okay, and there we're done. So we showed that one is a subset of this is a subset of that, that's a subset of that, and so they must be equal. Okay, and that's some of the proofs that we're going to do in this in this talk. I'm going to end it here. The proof of two is similar. Okay. Um, the next uh, mini series talk will be on fields, sometimes called algebras. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.